Okay, so I've been working on a project, so I'm going to do a quick little run through of a few of my processes. So you, I guess you can see how I go about creating some of these. Uh, the, the process kind of differs from piece to piece, depending on how much work is required to make something interesting. But this one, I guess, it's nothing particularly unique about it. It's just I decided it was probably time to do this. So. This is a building, it's under construction at the moment, it's in Melbourne. It's the Shangri-La Hotel. And I snapped this pic a couple weeks ago on my Pentax K1. And so what are my first step is I just get that photo, pull it into Photoshop, into Camera Raw, and then kind of balance out the exposure, kind of leveling out shadows and highlights and stuff like that. And sharpening up the edges and taking out all the noise, that way, it's, uh, there's not too much texture, and I have these nice and sharp lines, basically. Lots of detail, very high resolution image. So what I do is I start with a 8,000 by 8,000 pixel black empty project and put a guide in the middle so I've got the perfect center point. So in this case, I'll just go through here what I've done. I pasted the image, as you can see, there it is there, as it looks here. So buildings angling that way. There it is there, angling that way. Um, there's extra information on the on the edges there, but I've just just want to work with this part here in the center. And in this case, I've duplicated it. So there's one instance here, 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 and here. So basically, what I do is I just grab it, cut it, rotate, and mirror over here. Do the same thing here, and then do the same thing here. So rotate until I have a perfect shape. Put the guide off. It looks like this. But I like the guide on, so I can see exactly what the center point is. The next step in this particular project is I wanted to, I was just kind of playing around to see what it looked like if I joined it at a different spot. So I got this instead. So it's the same thing essentially, but I've kind of moved the images closer to one another. And I ended up rotating it. So just go back to where it'll go. Rotating it, so it's the same one, just rotated. I wanted to give, fill this space here, this empty space. So I used this to fill that empty space, right? So moving that in, so because I've got all the information here on the edges. Out here, there's more of the photo, so I can move it around. I don't want to move it in this instance at the moment because I actually want to use the history to go back and look at a few steps in a set. So once I was happy with that, then I merged it to this. So you can see this here. And the next step was actually, I just felt like it was just a little bit plain and boring. So I started working on, I guess, giving it more detail. So what I did is I cut out this slither in the center here. And because I just kind of liked the detail here, I just felt like the edges were a bit boring, but I liked the shapes here. So what I started working with was just the centerpiece here. So now, I'm gonna go back to history where I started working with that. So as you can see, there's the center and I duplicated it and then rotated. So it was back to back. That way it's kind of a perfect symmetrical shape, I guess. Then what I did was I, I made it smaller. So that way that the edges here wouldn't go over the line here. So this is this line is my main sort of guide. So I just know that anything in this corner, it's gonna look like this, but everywhere once I'm done duplicating it. So I guess I miss you know, I'm going to lose some of this stuff. That's okay. There's enough detail, right? So this is what it looks like once I've duplicated all four of these corners into one piece. The guide off looks like that. Started with playing with ways to fill out this corner. So what I did is I grabbed just this, this part here and then basically just duplicated it and moved into the corner here. You can see this extra bit in the corner was me trying to see if there was something else I could put behind it, but I just wasn't happy with what was happening. And that is just basically what it looked like underneath before, because I make duplicates of each of these layers. You can see them all down here. So I kept one of them, the last sort of one before I kind of flattened it and then made it smaller and then rotated and duplicated again. But I just figured that it didn't quite work for where things were. I was going to start trying to cut this corner out, but it didn't quite work. So that's when I grabbed this corner here and then mirrored it into the, into the edge there like so. And then as you can see, I just started basically doing the same thing for the other corners. The next thing I thought, you know, it would look better if it was angled in a different direction. I wasn't quite happy with the way this looked per se. I was like, yeah, it looks kind of cool, but I kind of want it to be more like a cross 
then an X. It's just, uh, it's all experimentation, but I decided to rotate it like so, but keep the way it was underneath. So you can see it's, I've duplicated the way it was and then rotated this. So now I want to try and make these work together. So the way I started doing that is just by getting rid of this piece here, but I figured maybe I could do something with this piece. So I grab this and turn it into its own shape and then find a place for it. So as you can see, I've grabbed that, moved it here along the edge. So I've got a guide, I know where to duplicate and like how to, where to mirror it. So here's the new shape, the guide off. You can see that I have just placed this here. It's kind of arbitrary. <laughs> I'd play around with where to place them. I don't know exactly where I want to put things. Most of the time I'm just playing around until something kind of sits. So when I was happy with that, I duplicated it and moved it all around. But I want this to be perfect because I've, you know, I've rotated a bunch of things. There's a chance there was some kind of slight miscuts. So what I do is I end up flattening this. So duplicating all the elements at this particular point and then flattening that and then using the guide cut the corner that I that I am the happiest with, which in this case I just try to work with the top left, make that perfect. See, you can see it's still there there. And then I start doing the duplication once more, deleting the layer underneath. So you can see things slightly move because I'm just making sure that everything's perfect, basically. So once I'm happy with that, I'm making a duplicate of that layer. And so then I play with the coloring. In this case, I went for this uh, tealy, greeny blue and uh, change the yellow a bit so it looked like before. Sometimes I go a little more wild with the color changes but in this case I decided to do this and Camera Raw is pretty good it's got their full HSL um, coloring akin to say Premiere and stuff like that so you can rebalance all the colors essentially hue, saturation, light and all that sort of stuff and then what I do with a lot of the lighting side of things is I try and keep the corners darker so it keeps the eyes focused more on the center. So I use a vignette in the effects to keep the edges dark, um, but then keep playing with bringing everything up, but then pulling the edges back down. Then in terms of the brightness, in this case, I've used Vibrance. Don't really use this feature too often. There's other plugins that I like to use to make colors pop, but in this case, it was changing the color of the blue too much. And I didn't really want to do that. I wanted to maintain this particular color. So I just went with Vibrance very basic. The next step is I create the frame. So this is using a plugin called Simplify, which basically creates this outline. Now these settings took me a while to perfect. I started using this plugin in say like, I'd say 2011, when I was playing around with like macros and all sorts of interesting stuff to try and make things look kind of out of this world. And uh, so it's a very old plugin and I've had it for a very long time. But yes, I'm going to make this frame out of it, out of the piece, essentially. It's really cool. Um, don't know if this is the intent, intention of this particular plugin, but what I like to do is I make this frame that it sort of just picks up all of the high contrast areas and makes an edge with it. It's kind of random on the color, but I kind of like what it does, to be honest. I sometimes rebalance the colors and also apply effects to soothe the edges as well but yeah, these all take quite a while to process. So I'm not gonna do that just now in this part of the video. And what I do is I'll go into and change the blending mode for the layer. So in this case, I chose linear dodge, which I pretty much do every time for this particular part of the piece. And so we have it look like this. So it adds these, these lines to the edges. Really, really cool. I think it looks really cool, personally. Now I'll also, you know, try to do things like make it like darken it a little bit, for example. Um, just depends if I want it to be really bright or if I want it to be a bit more like a bit dimmer. And another thing that I do as well as dynamic lighting. So I'll use a brush, brush tool essentially. So I'll create a new layer and then usually use color dodge for this and then change the opacity to like 40 or 30 percent. And then I'll just use a brush. So I'll just go brush max size, for example. So max size, zero hardness, find the exact center point and then put the brush down and then play with the opacity until I'm kind of happy with it. It just creates this glow essentially, which is pretty cool. And I'll keep working on this, just kind of perfecting it and just keep working away at it essentially. Probably do some more dimming on the edges, but 
that's pretty much it for this one. So yeah, now you've seen some of how I do some of this stuff. So yeah, hopefully you found that interesting.